Good morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to the Sunday morning worship service at the Gibson City United Methodist Church. A warm welcome to those listening over WGCY and those watching over Facebook live stream. My name is Jennifer Arsenal, and I will be your liturgist this morning. We have a few announcements to highlight. Please join us Thursday, April 1st at 7 p.m. for a Holy Thursday worship service. We will meet in person and we, all, we will also be streaming on Facebook Live. Our next announcement, we are inviting kids from preschool age through fifth grade to join us for Sunday school again starting April 11th. Sunday school will run from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Snacks will be served around 9.50 or immediately following our 8.45 worship service. If you have any interest in helping teach or to be a room aide, please contact April in the office. We still need a few more people to help. Um, our last announcement is that there is going to be a new small group forming. The time between Easter and Pentecost is a special one just as Jesus' disciples were waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we too can renew our focus on the Spirit's presence in our lives. There will be a 40 days with the Holy Spirit, fresh air for every day, uh, by author Jack Levison, and um, Susan Schultz will be leading those groups. We're gonna have opportunities for both Zoom groups and possibly, if there's enough interest, an in-person group. Uh, it'll meet for approximately one hour per week for seven weeks. Um, Sundays over Zoom starting April 11th through May 23rd at 10:15, and Wednesdays over Zoom and possibly again if there's enough interest in person from April 14th to May 26th at 6:30. Books are $13 and can either be ordered by Susan or on your own. So please contact Susan if you are interested in that. And now, are you ready to praise and worship the Lord? And now, please rise for the call to worship. God, we come, God. We come with hesitant steps and uncertain motives to sweep out the corners where sin has accumulated and uncover the ways we have strayed from your truth. Expose the empty and barren places where we don't allow you to enter. Reveal our half-hearted struggles where we have been indifferent to the suffering of others. Nurture the faint stirrings of new life where your spirit has begun to grow. Let your healing light transform us into the image of your son, for you alone can bring new life and make us whole. Amen. Our opening hymn will be Change My Heart, O God. Twice through. Hey, the screen on the back is working, so if you turn and look at it, you can get the words. All right. Change my heart, oh God. Make it go away. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? Change my change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God.
birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Our scripture lesson uh, today comes from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with reverent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who <coughs> obey him, and was designated by God to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are now gonna be blessed with music from our sanctuary choir.
great to have a choir. Amen, church? <laughs> you noticed, I, I, if you want to yell at somebody, yell at me. If anything happens in this first year and you don't like it, you got a free year to yell at the preacher, okay? I'm new. I don't know anything. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I took the ropes down off the front of the church because I hated the way it looked. So uh, Kim's back there riding guard, so it'll be all right. Amen. Got the ropes down, got the choir singing. Hey, we're starting to gain some footholds back, aren't we? I love it. <laughs> for those of you who may be new or may not have been here for a while, my name is Gary Fairchild. I am the current pastor. I'd like to say new, but the new's starting to wear off me. But hey, welcome to church. I'm glad you're here. You're all glad we're here, amen? Amen. All right. We're going to talk about a character today. And Hebrews is the chapter that probably speaks of him the most. He's mentioned twice in the Old Testament. Uh, one, one time in Genesis and one time in Psalms. And his name is Melchizedek. And the wonderful thing about Melchizedek Many, many Bible scholars liken his situation because we don't know his parents, we don't know his lineage, I don't know where he came from, he became a buddy of Abram's, and we all know who Abram is, right? He later became Abraham, and you, you want to know where it starts, it starts right here with Abram and Melchizedek. Every Sunday, normally, we try to take up an offering. How many of you remember those days when we pass it away? All right. Just wonder, it's going to happen again. It so happened that uh, Abram and nine other countries were taken over by armies. And Melchizedek shows up and he brings a very, very well-trained army and recaptures all the territory. Abram's so happy that he gives a tenth of all the spoils, a tenth of everything that the war captured back to Melchizedek. That continues today. But it is not Wesleyan, okay? John Wesley didn't believe in giving 10%. I just want you good Methodists to know that. Oh, no. He wanted to get you to give all you can all the time. Now, Methodists, I don't know how that's going to set with you, but you need to hear it, okay? <laughs> that's kind of how we get into one part of learning how... Jesus is asking you to give everything you have all the time for God. There's a similar. The family connection. We know that last week, remember that passage, John 3, 16? Hey, let's say it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have. Going to live forever. My goodness, that's what happened to Melchizedek. Uh, he was promised life eternity. So I love the similarities, and here in this Hebrew passage it comes up, and it begins this way very humbly. If you love God, I'm going to paraphrase this, if you love God, do all you can, any time you can, if you love God. Hey, people, we love God, don't we? Hey, people, we love Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. What has happened now between the time of Melchizedek and into this time of Jesus Christ there was something established. 
at Jesus' baptism, you're all going to remember that heavens opened up and the Spirit of God descended upon Jesus. The terminology is to give you a picture in your mind. As a dove lights up on a landing. Have you ever watched turtle doves? I've never seen a turtle dove dive bomb in. They always come in and lift a little bit and then settle in. It's one of the most prettiest landings of any birds. You want to watch a blackbird? Blackbird bitch, boom, man, he's on the ground. Woodpeckers, oh, they are just aggressive. The reason I know this, Ella has bird feeders right outside the kitchen window. And uh, we have about now eight squirrels. <laughs> How many of you can relate to what I'm talking about there? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I know she has had to spend $200 on bird feed, and the squirrels are just loving it. But God opened up the heavens, and he established a new covenant for you and I. And at that time, he said to Jesus, you are my begotten son. You remember that, don't you? So I was trying to think of begotten. Begotten is something, well, here's, here's, something is begotten when it's been generated by procreation. This is the dictionary. The, dic the dictionary says it. In other words, it has been fathered. A somewhat old-fashioned adjective begotten is the past, in, in the verb context, y'all were begat. <laughs> now that may not seem much, and you know, I was trying to keep a really positive spin on this. But you know what? It's a real big thing to have a dad. In fact, this passage would have been a great Father's Day sermon. Um, not everybody knows who their dad is. You know, the women, the women are in it for the long haul, this begat stuff. But so many times, children are being raised without a father. And God didn't want that for Jesus. Because kids ask, you know, kids ask. I know that I've been asked by children about their fathers, and they don't know their dads, and they say, well, where's my dad? I can't imagine what that's like for a child. Jesus, probably in his early, early 30s, 31, 32, comes up out of the Jordan, and God says, you are my begotten son. Now, I'm your dad. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I have been blessed to have several wonderful male role models in my life. Uh, some of them were a part of this United Methodist Church. Some of them didn't even darken the door of a church. But I praise God and thank God for each and every one of them. So you guys that are here listening to this sermon, if you're listening on the radio and you're a guy, go out of the way to make a kid feel like they matter to you. It will do a world of good. So that piece comes out of this Hebrews passage. Now, Melchizedek also shows up in many ways. He was a good man. He wanted nothing more than to have people understand the love of God. Hey, sound like somebody else you know? Oh, some biblical scholars have gone so far as to say, who is this Melchizedek fella? Jesus? Oh, I, didn't want to, I don't want to chase that rabbit down that hole, okay? But I sure like the way that he lived his life, and I like the way that Jesus lives his life. I really love it that there has been a new covenant grounded in grace 
Those included in this covenant are people who have reconciled themselves. Uh, let, let me say that a different way. Have reconciled their sin. You know what about reconciliation? You've accepted what you've done in your sin. You understand that there is a way to get rid of that sin. You know, I can't forget my sin. I would love to be able to forget my sin. God says, I will remember it no more. <laughs> I wish I could do that. But it hurts when we hurt God. And I carry that with me. I would imagine some of you are the same way. What I can learn through reconciliation is to, hey, have you ever heard my definition of repentance? How many of you are just dying to hear it? Oh, I can tell. You, can, you can just cut it with a knife. Here, tell us, please, Gary, tell us. What, repent. I like and repent because of sin. Um, what, it, what is happening now when I walk away from this chancel area? What's at my back? Well, let's just say Jesus. I mean, and that's really what that cross represents, isn't it? I mean, I, I look at that cross and I imagine... Jesus hanging on that cross for my sin, for your sin. And what's happening now that I'm walking away from that? Uh, I'm getting further and further and further away from Jesus. I bet you can relate to that. The wonderful thing in this new covenant is God says to you and I, wait a minute, there's a way to go back. <laughs> there's a way for you to get back up there. What do I have to do, people, to get back there? <laughs> yeah, you think it'll be hard? <laughs> Man, that's a mixed bag for me. Sometimes, it's <laughs> sometimes I run back to the cross. And sometimes you have to tear me away. To point me back to the cross. I bet you're like me. Now, you ready? What have I done? The biggest thing in repentance is being able to turn around. Have the strength to face Jesus. And that's hard. You know, when I was about seven years old, the old Fooseland schoolhouse was across from our house. And it was a great echo sounding board. I had watched something on public TV about the yellowed belly sap sucker. Now, when you're seven, I don't imagine that comes out too clear when you're yelling it at the schoolhouse. And I'm at the top of my voice yelling, yellow belly sap sucker, and just yelling it, loving the echo. And the next thing I know, my dad came out and hit me right where you hit kids. Boom! And said to me, don't you ever say that again. I didn't speak that back to my dad. Just didn't do it. But I wondered what was, what was so terrible with yellow-bellied sapsuckers. I got older and I probably think I know what he thought I was saying. I had to turn around. And I had to take that first step. And I keep in that repentance, walking back to Jesus. I haven't made it yet. Oh, I love Jesus with my whole heart. But, you know, one day I'm going to get to see glory because of who Jesus is. One day I'm going to walk beyond that cross. And I'm going to walk into heaven and Jesus is going to be standing there and he's going to say... Gary, you remember the yellow belly sap sucker story? <laughs> but that is the new covenant. Jesus walks with us every step of that. And God help us when we turn our backs on Jesus. That's the easiest way I can explain repenting. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions. 
And, he, and, and cries in tears to God on our behalf. He was afraid, and we're going to see that in, a, in about uh, nine days. We're going to see he was afraid. He went to a rock in Gethsemane. And he knelt there and he prayed. Remember what he prayed? If, if it's at all possible, God, take this cup from me. Take this task from me. Jesus was afraid. I've been afraid. I bet everybody in here has been afraid. God didn't leave him alone, though. Mm. And it was through his reverent submission, his love for God, the reverence, that Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done through me, God. Now that's pretty humbling, isn't it? The one who could have called 10,000 angels. The one who could have said, oh, this doesn't happen. Just with one sweep of my hand, I could make all of this go away. He didn't do that. For you and I to surrender ourselves willfully, you may not like it. This, when you turn around and start walking back, there's going to be a lot of you in that first step. But the closer you get to Jesus, there's more of him in each step. <laughs> there's something you need to know. I, I don't know if, or how you know this, but I know in your hearts that's that new covenant. See, it didn't have to be established in such a way that somebody had to continue to teach it to me. Somebody didn't have to walk the streets and make sure I was conducting my life as the church said I should. God went a step further in this new covenant. You know, I know, when I take a step away from God. You know when you sin, right? Oh, you confessed it with your mouth. There it was. But... God claims, God claims each and every one of us in the midst of that sin, in the place where it is furthest away from God. That's Billy Graham talking there. I don't know if you've read much Billy Graham, but I love, I love the way he writes as well as Max Licato. So you wonder how I get inspired. Billy Graham says to you and I, sin is anything which separates you from the love of God. Anything which separates you from the love of God. And I love it because Billy Graham has a great theology here. He's not saying one sin is worse than another. I mean, a lot of times we like to say, well, at least I'm not like such and such. That sound familiar? All sin hurts God. All sin is equal. It doesn't have variances. All sin hurts God. That's the theology of Billy Graham. And I subscribe to that. And every time I hurt God, I know it. I feel something saying, you know, you ought not to have done that. And I'm in a place where I have an opportunity to repent and turn and come back to God. That's what Melchizedek was about. That's what Jesus Christ is about. That's what my life is intended to do. And I hope you choose to do the same thing this morning. So once again, I give you this opportunity to think about giving yourselves completely to God. God loves you and claims you. And that's the most important thing I can say today. Praise be to God. Amen. You're quiet.
Did I shock you? Okay, I'm trying not to hurt you. I have just a couple minutes. I'm going to start talking to you, and I think it's important that your pastor tells you about some things in the big church. We are the Gibson City United Methodist Church, amen? But we're a connectional church. Unlike most churches in the, in, in the world, the United Methodist Church is connected. We care about each other. And there is a, a movement in the United Methodist Church. In 2019, we had a general conference special session down in St. Louis. And there is a hot topic in the United Methodist Church. Don't tell me what it is. Raise your hand if you already think you know what the hot topic is. Uh, okay, okay. Now I will say it for our listeners on Facebook and our listeners on WGCY. Human sexuality is at the heart of what the United Methodist Church is struggling with right now. In 2019, at General Conference, we chose, voted, you know how that works, that General Conference stuff? You people choose people to go to a big meeting every year in Peoria, okay? That's our annual conference. Your representatives here, uh, Barb Horsch, carries your vote there. Uh, hi, Barb. I, I would imagine you're listening or watching. Okay. We vote on people that will represent the Illinois Great Rivers Conference. That's all of us from Interstate 80, state line, state line to the tip of Illinois, that whole area. We vote on representatives out of that body to go to General Conference. Now, General Conference is global. And every four years, this global body comes together to take care of the business of the church. Are you with me so far? Have I put anybody to sleep? I'm just giving you 101, Methodist 101. We adopted to maintain the language that is in the book that we follow for guidance, rules, regulations. It's called the Book of Discipline. And in there, I'm going to just paraphrase this. The general understanding of United Methodist Church as it's written in the discipline is we do not find alternative lifestyles in line with Christian teaching. And did everyone understand if I said alternative lifestyle what I'm talking about? Okay, so there is a big movement going on trying to somehow bring everybody together as the Methodist Church without having us split, all right? I don't want to split. I tell you, if I'm having an argument, Chris and I are having an argument, I'm going to stay there until both of us have come to a place that we can understand one another. And I would imagine there's going to be give and take in that time. I want to stay at the table and talk. I want to stay at the table and understand. You know, I, the older I get, the more I understand that every one of us has shaken hands in one form or another with this subject. <laughs> the, the older I get, the closer I get to it. Just knowing people I love, okay? <laughs> the Methodist Church is trying to stay in love. We were going to have another conference, general conference, this year, 2020. They decided to postpone it until 2021. Now, before this next year is over, I will invite you to read some of the stuff I'm reading on both sides of the issue. I, I, I don't mind you knowing my hand. I love to have you read what I read. I'm trying to come to the table and not split this United Methodist Church. Now, I don't know what'll happen, but those delegates that we vote to go from all over the world We'll have that vote. There are people who are trying to encourage a split. 
and there are other people like me who are trying to encourage everybody to stay put, take a breath. All right, here you go. I'm going to tell you what Gary, this is Gary, this is from nowhere else. You need to know this. Do you know what I believe the biggest fight is about this? If we would choose to be totally inclusive, that would mean that we would ordain people with alternative lifestyles. Let me say it like this. You could have a gay person, you could have a lesbian person, you could have a questioning person right here where I am right now, and I don't think most Methodists are comfortable with that. I don't think we've given it enough thought. I'm asking you not to be in fear. I'm asking you not to be overreactive, but process what's coming out. That's what I'm doing. Uh, if we get one-on-one, -on -one, you want to talk about this, I'll tell you some of the comments I've heard. I want you to be informed. That's the kind of pastor I am. I will not, I, I won't back away from telling you the things that are going on in our church. You have that right. Now, if you don't understand it, you want to talk about it more, come and we will be in dialogue. But I need to introduce to you within the next year what's coming down the way for the United Methodist Church. And it affects the Gibson City United Methodist Church. Because y'all may have to make a choice as a church. So if we don't talk about it, don't get mad at each other, okay? Don't get mad over this, please. Don't disown your brother or sister because they might think differently than you do. I think Jesus' love is going to win. And that's how the church will continue, in Jesus' love. I hope I'm big enough to accept it. Amen. That was almost a sermon in itself, wasn't it? Okay, so look for things. Uh, I'll probably post them on the web page or maybe Facebook. Uh, if you see something you want me to read, shoot it off to me. Chris, I'm thinking of you. Uh, shoot it off to me, and I'll tell you if I've read it or not. And if I haven't, I'll read it, and I'll give you my opinion, okay? <laughs> All right. There are some things. That's one of the things I wanted to start our prayer time with. Uh, there was a horrendous accident here on Thursday. And uh, I, they're family to me. Uh, when I was nine years old, I was introduced to this family. I consider myself being raised by this man's brother. I have known these two since I was nine. That's a long time. But I learned that Carol Leisure was in an accident at the general dollar general store thursday morning it was terrible remember rainy just blowing and uh, i i want to pray for that accident and she lost her life I, I don't know all the particulars it's not right of me to even comment but i think how horrible it is for the leisure family and also the family that was involved in the accident I, the whole thing is just horrendous gibson so i want to pray about that today um, I want to pray for the farmers, believe it or not. You guys, how many of you are ready to go to the field now? Just, yeah, that's, what, yeah, that's what I thought. So we need to pray now for these farmers. Uh, I don't do weather. Don't ask me to pray for rain or for sunshine. 50-50, uh, I'm going to make somebody mad and somebody happy. So I just don't do weather, okay? Uh, Oh, I had a prayer request. Uh, I would only include this. Now, I love the University of Illinois, okay? But I, am, I got a request to pray for the U of I basketball team. Does anyone know what that's about? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, prayers of thanks for the team that went Friday down to the Midwest Distribution Center. If you were on that team, would you just stand up and wave at us? If you were part of that, just... Let's see who went. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. All right. So those are the things I wrote down that I'm able to talk about because we're live on the radio. I know you have things that you want to pray about, you need to pray about. So let me give you just this little bit of time to settle in and find that place you talk with Jesus. And we will continue with a pastoral prayer after that.
It is so wonderful to be in your house this morning, God, to see our brothers and sisters in Christ and to worship in person. Some of those folks for the first time are doing that right now, and it is an unbelievable feeling. I am trying desperately not to get the cart ahead of the horse because each one here as well as everyone listening are exhausted from this pandemic and the work we've had to do through it. Thank you for helping us stay the course, helping keep and make a dent in this COVID virus. Give us the strength to continue and be cautious I thank you that the shots are being opened and by the end of April anyone who wants a shot can have a shot. I praise the workers and the folks that have been on the ground working. And the only reason they do that is because they love. And they got that love from you without a question. I thank you for today and the challenges we will have but also the victories. I pray that you will be with every team in the NCAA and keep the players safe, make the tournament one that is played with honor and respect. I said I was gonna lift up the farmers and the farming communities and without a question or a doubt, it is getting to the point, especially with days like yesterday that we're wanting to drop something in the ground, be that a, a plow or be that seeds. And we are at that season once again right here in central Illinois where many, many people will be working long hours. I ask safety upon them. I thank you for the team that went down to uh, Springfield, down to Chatham. And, worked in the distribution center and all the families and places that are going to receive their efforts many blessings upon them as we know lives are trying to be put back together in the midst of this pandemic i pray for the united methodist church for the way that we are formed and governed I pray for us knowing that the voice that I hear is the voice of the people. And without question, we are a, an imperfect church in an imperfect world trying to serve the one who is perfect. I doubt we ever get it right. But help us strive to do that. That we might do the things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O oh God. Now this week coming up, it will be a hard week on many families. I lift up all the families who are grieving and particularly I, I'm going to pray for the Leisure family as they are dealing with the tragedy of the accident and saying goodbye to a wife and a mother. It is such a hard place to be. God, we need you to be with us as a church and let them feel the love. You and you alone know what's coming down the way. Give us the strength and the courage to take the steps as we are walking closer to you, back to the cross. Now, without question, this time is the most sacred time that we could ever find. And it's that time when all of our hearts are pulled into one place and we focus in one direction. And that focus is because of a prayer that you have taught us to pray together. And that prayer is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, it's time we looked around the room at each other and said three words that make this place pop. God loves you. Say that to somebody this morning.
All right. We can sing our closing hymn, All in Favor, Stand Up. <laughs> it's 593, if you're listening. The name of it is? Here I am, Lord. All right. powerful words in that song. So as we get ready to go, brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you my servant too. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen.